One thing that this commission taught us is that in the spirit of Dr. King, we brought together under the Board of Supervisors a very diverse group of people. And this group of people literally put together a new revolution, a new government. And we on the staff were pleased to be a part of that on a personal level. I have to point out to you that this job would not have been... ...about the event that's going on tonight. Well, tonight is a very important event because one thing that it does, it shows that black, white, Hispanics, we all get together when it comes to our youth and education and trying to make some positive movements. These young people are our future, and making sure that we keep hold of the dream is another part of our future. If we can do this and give young people some type of anchor, we've done our job, and that's what this is all about. This event, how many times does a young person get applauded? It just doesn't happen for us. This is important. It, it just fills me. Okay, how would you apply this in your everyday life, on the work, the job, at home, with your kids personally? How would you apply this to your personal life? Well, I do apply it, but everyone needs to apply it by just looking at a young person, looking for the potential in them and nurturing it. Everybody can be anything that they want to be, as long as someone takes the time to take a look at them and 
take them by their hand and pull them where they want to go. Okay. And that's what we need to do. Thanks a lot. Okay. Okay, we're back. And your name is? Imam Issa Abdul Karim. And we're celebrating tonight the Dr. Martin Luther King celebration. I would like to know what does this event mean to you? Well, it uh, it symbolizes the uh, the efforts that uh, Martin Luther King and those who were with him did in the 60s, and that was to uh, to try to you know establish some type of respect for African Americans here in this country, and to do it in a nonviolent way. All right, how would you proclaim that in your everyday life or in your work field or whatever the case may be? How would you live that? Well, I, I, I think by, by trying to follow uh, Reverend King's example, right. and that was to be able to be, um, to, um, to oppose the system, but do it in a way that it stays within the, within the legalities of the system. And you are Muslim? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, did Dr. King practice Muslim or was he Christianity? Well, basically, you know, when you get into the essence of the religion, there's really no different. Right. Uh, Muslims differ with Christians in terms of the fact that we do not believe that Christ was the Son of God. Right. But we do believe in Abraham. We do believe that Christ was a prophet. We believe in all the prophets of the Bible. So, you know, for the most part, there's really not that much difference. Okay. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. <laughs> and we're back, still celebrating. And we have with us Dr. Lenora Fulani. And if I'm not mistaken, she ran to become the President of the United States, and I was personally one of her supporters. And if you can just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're exactly doing now. Okay. I'm an independent. Um, I've been a builder of third party politics in this country for many years, and as you said, I ran for president twice. Right. I just recently ran for governor of New York State um, in the Democratic primary in an effort to expose the degree to which the African American community was disenchanted with the Democrats um, in the form of Mario Cuomo. And while everybody is bemoaning the fact that um, the elections took place on November 8th and a lot of Republicans went office, I think all it means is that people are searching back and forth for a new road. Um, and I hope to provide them one in terms of independent politics. So I'm thrilled to them. Okay. But we're here celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. And what does this celebration mean to you? Well, one of the things it means um, it has a sobering impact because a lot of the gains that Dr. King fought for and gave his life for, his whole activism has been um, undermined, I believe, by the lack of prog progress and the failure of many leaders who posit themselves as being in his image but have not carried out his plan. And one of the things I want to say to young people is that we're counting on them to take that forward. Um, I don't think we should give up, but I think we have a hell of a lot of work to do. Okay, thank you a lot. Thank you so much. I just want to wish you much success and let you know that you are one beautiful black woman. Thanks a lot. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm Dr. Lenora Fulani, and I support the African American News. Always thinking
I'm from the Roosevelt Community Service Center, Vice Chairperson. We're in Roosevelt, along with all the other CAP programs here in Nassau County, out here trying to make it better for our youth, uh, having a drug-free society, and also, uh, as we are here today, to ward this youth that's been struggling and trying, and uh, to show that all our youth are not out there in the streets. They're using drugs, using crack, but they're trying to, to make a better way, uh, have a better life for themselves. So that's what this is about here, and they're receiving their scholarship funds, and I'm just glad to be here and glad to see our black youth participating and trying to get ahead to better their lives and set example for our other black youth in the community. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to ask everyone at this time if they would kindly take their seats. Your main course. Well, what do you have to say to all our viewers here tonight? This is a very, very wonderful expression of people working with people and the spirit of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. We don't celebrate or mourn his death. We celebrate his birthday, the fact that the Lord gave him to us, and he's left so many of us behind who are inspired by his works. Well, thank you so much, no. and you enjoy your evening. You okay. <laughs> All right. the first Hispanic trustees, right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, your name is? Uh, my name is Max Rodriguez. I am the first trustee, Hispanic trustee of the Village of Hempstead mm -hmm. in the 351 year history, and also in more of Nassau County as well. Okay. I am very happy to be here. It really is an honor to be here tonight. Wonderful. We would like to know, how do you feel about the event that's going on here tonight? Oh, I feel very, very, very uh, proud uh, uh, because I am a minority as well of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., that did so many great things for the, for the equality of mankind. It, re it really is a, a pleasure to be here and be part of all uh, uh, this event tonight. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you, and thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Okay, thanks. Uh, and exactly what part did you play in the part of well, it? I, I was appointed as the commissioner on the Charter Revision Commission, and my part I played what I uh, well, first thing, I nominated the two uh, chairmen, the chairman and the vice chairman. I nominated them myself. Uh, I'm a teacher, a retired teacher from Farmingdale High. And what happened, I worked hard on that to make it sure that every, every I was dotted, every T was crossed. Being a teacher, I made them do their homework, and I kept them on the course, and that was right, very important. Right. And I let them know that uh, that was going to be a new government and that they had to make a very tough decision to get rid of their own government, but that was the law. Right. And uh, that's very important. And so it came about. So in 1996, January the 1st, we'll have a new government. Thank God for that, right? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We favored with selection.